Hi, this is Tim Yoder with Fit Small Business. Today, I'm going to teach you how to enter your bank transactions manually into the QuickBooks Online Bank Register. But before we get started, let's talk about when this is appropriate. So generally, transactions in QuickBooks Online are entered into input screens that request a lot of information so that QuickBooks can summarize your information and provide a lot of useful reports for you to manage your business. However, when you input transactions directly into the bank register, you lose most of those features of QuickBooks Online. So the only time I'd recommend entering bank transactions directly into the register is when you're doing a large amount of accounting after the fact. So for instance, perhaps you're doing a year's worth of your accounting in order to prepare a tax return. So you're not using that information to manage your business, you're simply compiling income and expenses. So entering transactions directly into your check register, that is a good way to get caught up uh, in QuickBooks Online, but it doesn't provide the information necessary to manage your business. So you're really not taking advantage of QuickBooks Online. So let me show you how to enter the transactions manually. It is very quick and that is nice. And then let me show you some of the reasons why you don't want to do this on a regular basis. Okay, so let's start at our QuickBooks dashboard. If you don't already have QuickBooks, there's a link below this video you can click and get 50% off for three months. So from your dashboard, we can go to Accounting, Chart of Accounts. This will list all the accounts you've set up. And let's look at our company checking account 1110. So if you click View Register, that'll bring up the register for this checking account. Um, I like to sort by the date column so that the most recent uh, are first. Uh, the, our Paul's Plumbing is some transactions we uploaded with a future date of 2024. So that's why it's in the future. Um, okay, so let's go through how we add a couple of, of transactions here. So if you click the drop down arrow here, it'll give you different types of transactions. If you're entering stuff directly into the check register, I highly recommend only entering checks and deposits. Everything else, uh, you can enter it, but it'll generally only allow a portion of the information, not all the information that you really need for those types um, of transactions. And so everything going in and out of a checking account can easily be classified as either a check or a deposit. Refrain from using any of the other items. If you need to use like a sales receipt, then go to the sales receipt input screen. Okay, so anything being entered directly into the bank register, we're going to enter as a check or deposit. So first, let's do a check. It's pretty self-explanatory, not much different than writing it in your own check register. Okay, so uh, let's make the date um, January 1st of 2025. So it shows up at the top of our list here. And it's check 5359 to, I don't know, let's choose a vendor here to accounting firm. Um, it does pull up information from prior transactions, so bookkeeping assistance, admin is the class, professional fees, we can click a location. So there is some information we can provide. Okay, and we're gonna hit save. And there we go, we've entered the information manually into our checking account. Now notice the first major thing that's missing is the ability to print the check, right? We can't print the check. Um, so that's a problem. So again, this works very well when you're inputting information from a year ago, right? So if you're doing a lot of this after the fact, so the check was written a long time ago, you're just recording it into QuickBooks, so you don't need to print the check, right? You can record it directly into the check register. Okay, so very quick, but again, you lose a lot of the functionality of QuickBooks. So the other type of transaction we can enter is a deposit. Pretty similar. Um, let's say we got it from Aaron um, for some bath vanity work. Deposit would say $200. And we can choose a revenue account. Sales of product income. Okay. And we can choose a location. Okay. So let's hit save. And there we go. We've recorded the deposit. So oftentimes, if you're recording uh, deposits after the fact, you're not going to have them by individual customer name. You will have, say, six or seven customer checks that got combined and put into a deposit. You're just inputting the checking account activity from a year ago. So you're just going to combine all those deposits into one 
um, all those customers' checks into one deposit and record it to, to gross revenue. So it's much, much quicker to do that here in the check register than it would be to go through and enter all eight of those customer checks. But again, you then don't have the information in QuickBooks Online to show how much each customer paid if you want that information later. So again, much quicker to do it in the bank register, but you lose a lot of information. You really don't want to do it more than absolutely necessary. Okay, so let's look a little bit more in depth here at the information that we are missing. Okay, so let's, what happens if we were to write a check the normal way? Well, let's go to new check. Again, so this is the standard way that you write a check. So we can choose our payee, say accounting firm, um, gives us the mailing address, it didn't do that before, gives us a check number. We can apply a custom tag, that's something we weren't allowed to do in um, something we weren't allowed to do in the check register. Okay, here we have it going to professional fees, but what if this was instead of accounting firm, uh, let's say we're buying some inventory here. Um, so who would we, let's say maybe electronics manufacturer. Okay, so let's delete this. Now, from the electronics manufacturer, we're going to purchase a service. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going to purchase inventory. So let's just say, I don't know, textured white pendant. Okay, so by writing a check, we can purchase inventory. That inventory then is going to go into our inventory count that QuickBooks keeps. So if we were to record a check for inventory in our check register instead of going through the proper check screen our inventory would be off because we have no way of assigning it to a product or service when you're in the check register you can only assign it to an account okay good okay so I'm just going to close out of that that's one reason you don't want to enter checks directly into the uh, into the bank register because you can't use the product or service description so you can't properly affect your inventory okay same thing was with the deposit so the correct way to do the deposit would have been to come up here to go to customers and the sales receipt so we want to make a sales receipt to Aaron well, first we can see it pulls up his email. So we can now email Aaron a copy of his sales receipt. When we entered a $200 deposit into the check register, we couldn't do anything like that, right? We weren't able to give him a receipt. Now we can automatically email him a receipt. Um, again, if you're, when you do a sales receipt, you're going to record it to a product or service, which means it'll take it out of inventory. When you record the deposit directly in the check register, you can't get the inventory item taken out. Okay, so there you go. That's good examples of why you often don't want to record information directly into your check register. But again, if you're doing a lot of after-the-fact accounting where you're just sorting through bank statements, inputting transactions directly from those bank statements, then entering them directly in the bank register is a really good idea. It's much faster, but you lose a lot of the functionality of QuickBooks Online. If you want to learn the proper way to enter many of these transactions you can google fit small business quickbooks online tutorials and we have 46 different tutorials uh, that you can use to learn how to properly use the input screens in quickbooks online okay well again this is tim yoder with fit small business i appreciate your time and i hope you found this helpful